a little miserable, but it's okay. I'll give them wheat and they'll love me for it. Oh, hey there, friend. Welcome back to another episode from our 1.19 series where we are exploring the new wild update. In today's episode, we are going to be building a cow farm because I want food and leather. And we are going to be collecting resources and then building an iron farm. And for the first part of today's episode, I actually streamed it. So let's get right into it. Now that the Cow Crusher 5000 is done, let's go take a look at it. So I'm actually very happy with how this turned out. Uh, not for their sake, but more for my sake. Uh, they look a little miserable, but it's okay. I'll give them wheat and they'll love me for it. But look at this, guys. I've just been running this and breeding up the cows and the Cow Crusher 5000 is working so well. I have unlimited food now. I can make books. I can make picture frames, item frames. I think going forward when I do a series, I'm always going to make a little cow crusher like this. Yes, it's inhumane, but uh, it benefits me. So it's great. I made a little like uh, people so that I can like check on them to see if I can breed them and like not die from creepers and stuff and phantoms. But this works so efficiently and it's such a small little uh, build and such a small farm. But we're gonna quickly run back home and sleep. All right, now that it is morning and we are well rested, I also wanted to show you guys that I found these two. A uh, wandering trader stopped by when I was actually building this whole hobbit hole. And I just uh, kept them around because they kept kind of wandering, you know. I figured, uh, why not make them our first official pets, you know? We need some friends around here. So these are our two llama friends. Comment below what we should name them. I, I don't have name tags, so uh, they'll just be honorarily given names. Now that we've uh, gotten to see our cow farm, I want to show you guys our iron farm because it works. It actually works. And as we're coming out of the trees, here we are. It is running efficiently. I decided to make this stream of water since sometimes the uh, the hoppers don't catch the iron. It like comes and falls right here and then falls to the ground and I was losing it and now it was getting collected. So look at this. Because I made this water stream, I saved a stack and 11. I actually AFK'd here for a long time. Stacks, like completely filled up. We are good on iron, guys. I made a working iron farm for once in my life. I'm so happy. And it's all thanks to this guy and our forever terrified villagers. But this is working so well. With the poppies, I've just been putting them in this chest, funneling them down. And uh, we're getting a little bone meal. This is the redstone torch that turns the farm back on, the iron farm. I turned it off because obviously it's it's full. Like I don't I don't need more iron right now. So we're leaving our torch in here for now. But we cannot keep our iron farm and our cow farm looking like this. Oh no no. We are going to build up a little uh, a little mushroom build for both of these things. So my idea is that because we're in a dark oak forest and you see the little red mushrooms dotted around, we are going to be building a giant mushroom build to kind of hide our iron farm and then we'll know that as little farms pop up around here that they are all the mu big mushrooms. So I think it's going to be great. I have the idea that since this is an iron farm, we'll use some iron blocks, some more like lighter blocks, grays, silvers for the mushroom topper. But uh, we have a problem. I don't have silk touch to pick up mushroom stem blocks and I don't have access to quartz or like fortune three. So we are going to spend some time uh, trying to get those things. We are at our village. Now guys, I totally forgot. You know that mushroom island? I literally, it's right here. Our house, right there. Mushroom island, right there. That's not luck. I don't know what is. All right guys, I was thinking. So we need to trade uh, tons of our iron with the uh, weaponsmith. I wanna get a toolsmith and an armorer. If we level these guys up by selling them armor so that we can get emeralds so that we can upgrade the masons, uh, we can get full diamond gear today. So uh, we're, we're definitely doing this. Let's go grab tons of iron, bring it over here. And uh, well, I mean, you know how it goes, the villager grind. And so I started by converting a farmer into a fletcher so that I could get sticks. I worked on my water bucket clutches from making my water bucket last episode. 
and I made some axes so that we could go chop down trees to convert to sticks. And when I say trees, I mean lots of trees. And I just wanted to take this moment to say thank you so much for all of the love and support on episode one. I have been absolutely blown away by all the excitement from you guys, the support on this episode one, and I'm excited to have new friends along to follow this 1.19 Let's Play series. But seriously, you guys are amazing and have been so encouraging in the comments. It truly means a lot to me, so thank you so much for your comments, your likes, and your support. It makes me even more excited to share this world with people that are just as excited in this world as I am. So thank you so much, friends. Back to the video. Sappy step aside, we continued trading sticks to get emeralds with this Fletcher until we had it fully locked out for now. Did a, a water bucket clutch, which I landed and was very proud of. Finally got ourselves a sharpness two and knockback one sword so we could be a little safer. Heard some growling in the ceiling and I realized that I had some unwanted neighbors, which I evicted them pretty quickly. The second neighbor uh, was a little bit more uh, stubborn, didn't want to leave, uh, tried to harm me, so we uh, did a courtside duel, which uh, I won. Then we went back to leveling up our weaponsmith from novice to apprentice so that we could hopefully get the iron trade. And when he leveled up, we got it, so we were in business. And so we started trading out iron for emeralds, leveling up our masons, back to the weaponsmith for more iron, leveling them up some more to see what we could get from them. We finally get axes in diamond, which is great. Then we were able to level them up to master and get a sharpness one sword as well. Getting geared up early, I think this is gonna pay off. Honestly, I think that uh, an iron farm in episode two uh, is definitely paying off. This guy is uh, pretty great. And we bought ourselves that sharpness two sword. You know, I only wanted him so that I could uh, get emeralds to trade with the uh, the mason, but uh, you know, getting geared uh, to diamond potentially today is uh, not bad. So then I decided to make a blast furnace to convert this Fletcher into an armor to just uh, get some diamond gear as we're already getting diamond tools. And then I started the process of leveling them up as well. Traded more iron for emeralds. Leveled up the armor some more. But I didn't want to keep all of this iron armor that he was giving us, so I decided to convert this into iron nuggets instead. Traded clay balls for emeralds to level up our stone mason. Then traded emeralds for chiseled stone to level the apprentice up, got him to a journeyman, and then I needed more emeralds. Went back to our weaponsmith, and he had increased his prices. Little scammer. He knows I need him, unfortunately. Went back to trading more sticks for emeralds. Leveling up our armor a bit more. We finally leveled him to expert. Went back to trade more iron for emeralds, and I realized he increased his prices again, this time even more. I can't believe this guy. He's a thief. From four to 10, sir. I'm just gonna make a different villager, a different trade, so you can't do this to me anymore. Yeah, what do you think about that? Okay, you don't care, sure, of course. So I made a king size bed, made them some bread, and started making a path to lead them to the beds, gave them all the carbs, and then uh, waited until the magic happened. And then my little villager was running around. You will be the future son. Went back to our stone mason, traded him up from expert to master. All right, guys, we finally got quartz. Yay, I will take all of you. Now we're in business, guys. Now, we just gotta grind a bunch of uh, emeralds to get more of these quartz blocks here, so we're just gonna work on that next. I don't know when this happened, but we now have two. I'll take it, but didn't expect two though. I then proceeded to kick this child out of their bed to sleep in it. Tried uh, jumping on the bed with them again, and you know, uh, still getting judged. I don't think that will change. And then we were back on the grind, trading with the weaponsmith, 
the stonemason, the weaponsmith, the stonemason, the weaponsmith, the stonemason. One eternity later. After all that monotony, I needed a change of pace, so I went shopping, picked myself up a pickaxe, shovels, and then combined them on an anvil, and then I got myself a new shiny outfit. Oh, guys, look at this! We've got some diamonds, we've got our sword, we've got our axe, and we have some diamond gear, just because we've been trying to get quartz this whole time and uh, upgrade with iron, so... That is a pro move, guys. We got uh, diamonds and we didn't really even uh, set out to get that as a focus. We just wanted to get more quartz so we can have some uh, mushroom block stems. And then we were finally on to phase two, which was uh, avoiding skeletons and getting the rest of our resources. So next we needed to collect a bunch of light gray concrete powder and light gray concrete. So I spent some time mining that up. Grab some white concrete as well and mine that up. Grabbed some brown concrete and started mining that up as well. Alrighty everyone, we have all of the supplies. Uh, I believe all of the supplies that we will need to make our little uh, mushrooms. So we're primarily gonna be using quartz blocks for the base of it, mixing in some of the diorite and you know, we're, we're bougie now, we're rich. So maybe we'll mix in some of the iron blocks, who knows, and some birch. But then for the top of the mushroom, we're just gonna be combining a bunch of different brown blocks and then for the little white polka dots i figured this is almost like a pink kind of like the cow's udders are so i feel like this could be a really cute accent block for the little polka dots that's what we're going to do for our color palette now let's make a mushroom house Alrighty guys, we have finished building up our mushroom house for our cow farm, so let's go take a look. As you come up the path, I have decided to put wheat fields kind of rolling into the hills, stacks of hay bales because we, uh, we feed our cows in our Cow Crusher 5000 wheat. And so I figured it was very uh, fitting to just have a bunch of wheat fields all the way around so we can oh don't look at the enderman so we can just uh pick up some wheat whenever we need to and feed our little cows inside but here is what we have for the build let's add some shaders on from the outside we've just got it decorated with lots of leaf blocks we've got some lanterns hay bales we use some of the roots some lichen vines glow berries and that's just all the way around i love the roof palette that we have it's just soul sand concrete we've got the concrete powder and some different wood blocks and then we used the uh the white terracotta which looks like the pink accents for kind of like the cow udders for the mushroom stem we have quartz we've got some iron we've got birch we've got quartz pillars we've got diorite and we just kind of varied that with slabs stairs and the full blocks all the way around we made it so that it looks like some of the stems are kind of like creeping out towards the fields but all the way around i just think it looks so cool now since it's getting dark we're gonna go inside because i also made oh and and it's raining so definitely going inside but on the inside I just put some brown and white carpet because uh, cows and then I just added some glow berries and some vines a lantern to just make it a little cozier but I love the carpet I think it's just a nice little touch got some potted plants on our way up the staircase some more carpets some paintings lanterns glow berries and up the ladder we have the bedroom space so we've got a little shelf with our potted plant our couch our bed we've got paintings glow berries bushes some uh, mushrooms to decorate it with and a little uh, countertop but this is what we got for our little mushroom house and i think it's so cute 
I think I did a good job just filling the space for how tiny this is and just really adding some detail blocks. But since it's night outside, we are going to sleep. Alrighty, it is morning time, the sun is out, and I'm going to uh, run up the side of the cliff here so you can get a good view of the top of the mushroom. And here is the mushroom from a higher vantage point so you can really see the full mushroom stem with the mushroom top and the different uh, colors we use to kind of texture the top of it. But that's what we got. And yeah, what do you guys think? I think it turned out great. I love having the wheat fields all around it because it's just so fitting since we're gonna be feeding our cows all of the wheat to keep breeding them up. But uh, we got one build down, now one to go. So let's go head over to build up our little iron farm mushroom house as well. Alrighty everyone, we are done with our time lapse and you already kind of saw some of it, but we've got some detail going on so I will put some shaders on so we can fully enjoy this. But here we have our mushroom build. We've got all the different block variants of diorite, polished diorite, white concrete powder, the quartz pillars, quartz blocks, and even iron blocks mixed in with some vines, some lichen, some azalea bush, some peonies, and just kind of it wraps all the way up. And I just kind of did the exact same thing all the way around. Some of the mushroom roots are coming a little bit further out and I textured them as well here. The bushes again winding down to the base of the mushroom. And then if we go on inside, we have a cozy little house, which uh, we will need to mob proof this a little bit more. But we've got our nice little entrance here, some plants on the side, some lichen and lanterns on this side. We've got a nice little kitchen to smelt some stuff up. We've got a big living room and a bedroom to hang out whenever we are just AFKing for some of our iron. I really like how I kind of disguised the chute that everything uh, is like funneled down through. It kind of just makes it look like a central pillar, uh, not exactly central, but you know, central-ish. And then we've just got our ladder all the way up here to our iron, but uh, you don't really see that from down here, and I really like that. You'd never imagine that there's an iron farm above us or inside this giant uh, mushroom tree, but I love it so much. What do you guys think of the builds that we were able to get done today? This iron farm build and our uh, cow farm build. I love both of them so much. But that is all the time that I have for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed everything we got done today. We built a cow farm, an iron farm. We grinded a bunch of quartz to build the mushroom base for our lovely iron farm mushroom. And we used the quartz on our cow farm mushroom build as well. And the wheat fields are growing up and they look beautiful in the sunshine over here. But uh, we did a lot today. Hope you enjoyed today's episode and the builds that we completed. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you next time.